All right, welcome back. This is lesson two on linear function. Okay, and in the last lesson you probably had several questions, uh, one of which is delta y over delta x thing. You know, slope equals delta y over delta x. What does this mean? Uh, today I'm going to clear up some of the confusion on those definitions and also go more in depth with respect to writing the equations of the line and what these mean and how they relate. Okay, and what does the line itself represent? Okay. Now, we're going to start with, again, what two pieces of information do you need to find to graph a line, to write the equation of a line, okay? Uh, hopefully you remember, we need a point and a slope, okay? And again, if you can find these two pieces of information, the problem becomes very easy. And we're going to be looking at different types of problems. Today, slightly different, okay? Notice. I've given you information or in your handout sheet that you guys will be working on for homework. Uh, you're going to see problems like this. A line passes through two points. Okay, so in the problem you've been given two points. It passes through the point negative 210 and the point 35. And okay, well, now we're missing a piece of information. So what of these, of these two pieces of information, which one do you already have? Well, hopefully you say we have a point. Okay, you have a surplus of points. You have how many? You have two points. Okay, now I say pick one of the points. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And I always tell students, pick the point that has positive values or pick the point that has the smallest values. So which one of these points would make more sense? Well, it would make more sense to pick the point 3, 5 because it has smaller values. Well, respectively, I guess the 3 is larger. But, okay, smaller values, mm, the 5 is smaller than the 10, and the values are positive, okay? But for teaching purposes, I'm going to use the point negative 2, 10. I'm also going to show you that it does not matter which point you choose. Okay, so we're going to use the point negative 210 for the video, okay? Point that we're going to choose is negative 210. And, ooh, slope. Well, they don't give us a slope. Okay, so you have to find your slope. And this goes back to our definition. Yesterday, what did we say? We said that delta means, okay, the name of the symbol is delta. Look at yesterday's video. Okay, delta means what? So, well, Precisely, it means change in position, or what? Subtract. Okay, we think of this as subtract. So, to find a slope, we're going to use the definition. Definition of slope said what? Slope equals delta y over delta x. So let's write that. To find the slope, we're going to write m equals delta y over delta x. Now, remembering that delta means subtract, what are you looking at here? You're looking at subtract y and subtract x. So subtract y, divide by subtract x. So let's write, this is your slope formula. So this means subtract your y values. You get the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to use this formula uh, to calculate the slope of our line. Now, on quizzes, on tests, when I ask you what is the definition of slope, this is what you write. You write m equals delta y over delta x. Do not write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You will lose a point, okay? Uh, this is the proper definition, okay, for this class. Now, okay, so we have to do what? We have to find a slope. They give us points, okay? They give us two points. We need to find a slope. The slope formula says, or delta y over delta x says, subtract your y values, then divide by subtract your x values. Now, how do we do this? We're going to start with our y values, okay? What are the y values of the points? The y values are 5 and 10, okay? So I say take the second y value and subtract the first. It doesn't matter which one do you want to call the second, which one do you want to call the first. It does not matter. Uh, let's call 5 the second value, and let's call 10 the first value. Okay, so we're going to take 5 and subtract 10. So 5 minus 10 over, and now you're going to subtract your x value. It's just something you need to remember here. What did we start with for the y value? We started with what? We started with 5, okay? And 5 was in our second point. Okay, so we started with 5, then we subtracted 10. So the only thing you need to remember is that when you subtract your x values, you need to start in the same point. We started with 5 and subtracted 10. You need to start in the same point for your x values. We're going to start with what? We're going to start with 3 and subtract negative 2. Be careful here. 3, subtract here. 3, subtract negative 2. Okay, so we're going to write 3 subtract negative 2. Now, first thing we're going to do is fix this. Okay, what does minus negative mean? When you have two negative signs between, subtract negative means add. Okay, so we're going to change this to addition. Okay, so we're really looking at 3 plus 2. 
Now on top, 5 minus 10, the signs are different, so we subtract. 10 minus 5 is 5, take the sign of the larger, so this is negative 5, okay? 3 plus 2 is 5, we end up with negative 5 divided by 5, which is negative 1. So, we calculated, we calculated that our slope is negative 1. So I'm going to erase all of this, and well, yeah, let's go ahead and erase it. You can always rewind the video. Okay. Well, here, I'll leave this up here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. No, I'm going to erase that, because we're going to need the space. So slope is what? Slope is negative 1. Now, when graphing the line, we remember, uh, or we use the analogy, that slope is rise over run. Okay? The top number represents our rise, and the bottom number represents our run. Now, yesterday, I said to write this as negative 1 over 1. Now in this class, this is technically improper. I don't want to see this written on your paper. Okay, do we write, when we write the number 2, okay, it would be really hard to look at if we always wrote 2 over 1. Okay, we just write what? 2 over 1 is just 2. So you're just going to write 2. Negative 1 over 1, we're just going to write as what? Negative 1. So I want you to just leave your slope as negative 1. Let's start with our point. Our point's location is negative 2, 10. Okay, negative 2 means 2 units left, 10 means 10 units up. Uh-oh, we ran out of space. Okay, so let's talk about conserving space on your graph paper. Notice that this graph only goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units high. Okay, you drew a graph on your graph paper. It's not big enough for the point. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to change our grid. All right, now, or change our unit, our scale. Okay, now, do we have enough room to go 2 units to the left? Yes, we do. 2 units to the left is fine. So we're not going to change our x-axis scale. We're going to leave this alone. But on our y-axis, in order to go 10 units high, we need to change our scale. So in this class, when you change your scale, you just need to let me know that you changed it. And what did you change it to? Okay, how do you tell me this? You mark the locations. Now, we see to go 10 units high, we could do units of 2. We could go 2 four, six, eight, and we would be fine, 10 units high. So we're gonna change our vertical scale to units of two. We're gonna call this two, and this four, and that's all I need to see. So what does two, four mean? Two, four tells me that on your graph, you mean that your units are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. You're welcome to write all of the values, but it's not necessary. It also tells me that your negative Units go in the same pattern, so it tells me that this is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. It's not necessary to do this. If you would like to do this, that's fine, okay? But all you need to do in this class, the rule is, you need to tell me the first two values, what those are, and I will be able to determine what your scale is. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I'm assuming. Now, 2 units left, 10 units up. So we're going to go 2 units left. Notice, our horizontal scale has not been changed. So our horizontal scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is okay for your horizontal scale to be different than your vertical scale. Okay? If nothing is written, my assumption is that your scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. Okay, so 2 units left, 10 units up. So we're going to go 2 full units to the left. 10 units up is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or 5 units on the vertical. Okay, so negative 2, 10 is here. Let's see. As precise as it can be, let's mark its location. Location is negative 2, 10. Okay, this is the location of the point. Remember, the point is where we start. Now, your slope is negative 1. Remember, the slope is direction. Just like you give me directions to go, let's say, five blocks east and four blocks north, or etc., you're going to give me directions here. The rise is the top number, the run is the bottom number. Now, we don't write over one, so what is our denominator? Our denominator is what? I will write it one more time so you can see it. The denominator is one, so let's talk about this. The rise is what? Rise is negative one, the run is positive one. The rise means how far we go up and down, so we are going to go down one. The run is how far we go left and right, so we are going to go left. right one unit. Remember that right is positive, left is negative, up is positive, down is negative. So down one, right one. Now, again, don't write this on your paper. I want you guys to be able to see that your denominator is one, so you do this in your head. The rise is negative one, and the run is positive one, so we go down one, right one. Okay, so from the location of the point, we're going to go down one, right one. Okay, so you go down a full unit, right a full unit. That's wrong. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, you have to remember, 
what has been changed? Your scale is in units of two vertically. So when you go down one, okay, going down one, if you go down a whole unit on the graph, a whole unit represents how many? A whole unit represents two. So to go down one is actually to only go down a half a unit. Okay, so we're gonna go down a half a unit. Okay, so a half a unit represents one, and a whole unit represents two. Okay, so to go down one is just to go down a half a unit, and right one unit is a full unit on the x-axis because the x-axis is in units of one, two, three, four, five. So from your point, go down a half a unit, which actually represents a whole unit, and then right a whole unit. So down a half unit, right a whole unit. Do it again, down a half unit, right a whole unit. Okay, yesterday I said going down one, right one is the same as going up one, left one. So to go up one, left one, notice, can negative one over one be written as positive one over negative one? The answer is yes. Okay, we can move the negative to the denominator. So here we have a rise of negative one and a run of positive one, okay? So we say go down one, let me erase that. Go down one, right one, okay? Here, if we move the negative to the denominator, our rise is positive one, and our run is negative one, and we know that these two values are equivalent. So to go down one, right one, is the same as to go up one, left one. Okay, so down one, right one, is the same as going up one, left one. Now on our graph, down a half, right a whole unit, down a half, right a whole unit, is the same as going up a half, left a whole unit. Now you're gonna graph your line, okay? Now, again, we don't write the denominator of one. Uh, does our line appear to be falling, or it, does our line appear to be going downhill or uphill, left to right? Hopefully you say downhill, and remember that downhill is consistent with what type of slope? Downhill is consistent with negative slope. So again, double check, make sure that your line has a negative slope. Your slope is negative, your line should be falling, or going downhill, left to right. All right, now, I'm gonna erase this so we have space. Step one is still to graph, okay? Same types of problems tonight, okay? Just a little bit different given information. Step two is to write your point, slope, form of the equation of this line. Now, remember from yesterday, if you need to, you can go back and rewatch the other video. We start with y, and we write opposite the y value of the point. Since the y value of the point is 10, we put the opposite of 10, which is what? Negative 10 equals what goes next? What goes next? The slope. We write negative 1, open a parenthesis, and write x, and now opposite the x value of the point. The x value of the point is negative 2, so we're going to put the opposite of that, which is positive 2. Now, this is bad form. Again, you can, uh, this loses points, guys, on the test. Why? Because negative 1 times the quantity. We don't write negative 1 here. Do we write negative 1x? No. Okay, we write just negative x. We read negative x as negative 1x. We understand there's a negative 1 in front of x. Do we write 1x in this class? No, we just write what? x. So we assume that, or we understand that there's an unwritten 1 in front of x. So, what is in front of x? An unwritten 1. What is in front of x? An unwritten negative 1. Okay, so now, we don't write negative 1 times a quantity x plus 2, we just write what? Negative quantity x plus 2. Okay, and we understand this to be negative 1 multiplied by this quantity. Now, step 3 is to find slope intercept form and remember that slope intercept form y equals mx plus b says that y must be on its or by itself on the left side of the equation so we need to get y by itself and how do we get y by itself to go from point slope to slope intercept we get y by itself by moving the negative 10 to the right and it will become positive 10 but before we do that we need to first use distributive property now Multiplication distributing over addition. We're going to take the negative 1, multiply by x, negative 1, multiply by the 2. So we end up with what? y minus 10 equals negative 1 times x. I'm just going to erase that. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now move your negative 10. It becomes positive 10. Cross it out. We end up with y equals 
negative x, and negative 2 plus 10 is positive 8. Remember, the signs are opposite, subtract. Now, you are looking at your y equals mx plus b form. I'm going to write that underneath, y equals mx plus b. And again, from algebra 1, you understand m to be the slope. And b was, or you were told that b was your y-intercept. Correct, but incorrect. Okay, is 8 your y-intercept? No, we write the y-intercept as a point. We write it as 0, 8. Okay, your x value is 0 and your y value is 8. All right, so when I say what is the y-intercept, don't say verbally 8. You say the y-intercept is 0, 8. Remember that points have two parts, okay? So we're not just going to say 8, we're going to say 0, 8. Let's check the graph and see if this matches up. We see here that our slope is what? Slope is negative 1, and our y-intercept, represented by b, is what? 0, 8. Now, before we check the graph, do you see that within this equation, this contained two pieces of information, okay? And what two pieces of information are contained within the y equals mx plus b, or the slope-intercept form? Do you see a point and a slope? Hopefully you say yes. You see a point, you see a slope. And we can draw this information out of the equation. Okay. Soon you will be doing all of this backwards. Okay. You have to look at an equation and you will have to graph the line. So looking at an equation, you will have to tell me, for instance, if I say y equals 2x plus 3, you will have to look at this and tell me the slope, remember y equals mx plus b, the slope is what? The slope is 2, and the y-intercept is your point. Okay. Your y-intercept is represented by this number. Right? The point is 0, 3. So can you look at a slope-intercept equation and tell me the point and tell me the slope? Hopefully you say yes. Now, before we do this, or I should say before we go any further in this problem, let's make sure that this matches up with our graph. So we see that our slope should be negative 1 and our point should be at 0, 8. We obviously know our slope is negative 1. We've graphed it. Okay? It's written here. This does match up. But our point, 0, 8, is this on our graph? Okay, remember that you're in units of 2, so where is 0, 8? We don't go left or right, we just go 8 units up. So 2, 4, 6, 8, here it is. It's a mark its location, 0, 8. Make sure that this point matches up with the y-intercept here. Okay, now, so you see that this matches your graph. That's just a way to double check. If this does not match your graph, Something went wrong. You made a mistake going from point slope to slope intercept, or you never did write your point slope form correctly. Now, rewrite this. Y equals negative x. What was it? I'm sorry. Negative x plus 8. Lost my train of thought. Okay, y equals negative x plus 8. This is your slope intercept form. Now, to go to standard form, step 4 is standard form. Remember that we need the x term and the y term on the left. Remember that standard form says ax plus by is equal to c. There's the line that divides the equation into two parts, or the equality divides the equation. The x term and the y term are on the left. So we need to put the x term and the y term on the left. Notice that y is already on the left. We need to take the negative x and move it to the other side. Negative x will move and become what? Positive x. So we have positive x. What's well, already over here? We already have positive y equals 8. Remember your two rules. Two rules are that, and these are not written down, you just remember them. The x term must be positive. Okay, is there, are we good here? Is the x term positive? Hopefully you say, yes, it's positive, so we're good here. Secondly, there cannot be any fractions in the standard form. Do we have fractions in the standard form? No, so we're good. Okay, so the x term must be positive and no fractions. We're good on both ends. So this is your standard form. <clears throat> x plus y equals 8. Now, Lastly, uh, step five is to find x-intercept and y-intercept. Now, just remember this. Okay, so if we look at here, maybe let's make this thing. Okay, so x-intercepts, x-intercepts. X-intercept means where it crosses the x-axis. So if we look at points on the x-axis, here I'll use a different color. Look at points on the x-axis. This point here, what's its location? Its location is 1, 0. Okay, what's this point? 
on the x-axis. So we're looking at points that are on the x-axis. This point is what? 2, 0. This point is 3, 0. This point is 4, 0. What do all of these points have in common? All of them have what? y values of 0. All points that lie on the x-axis have y values of 0. So we're going to say, to find an x-intercept, we already know something about this point. We're going to say, we know that an x-intercept has a y value of what? 0. Now, to work this out, we're going to use one of these equations. It does not matter. Any of these equations will get you the same answer. All three of these equations, I'm going to put a check mark. This is your point slope form. This is your standard, I'm sorry, your, this is your point slope form, this is your slope intercept form, and this is your standard form of the linear function. All three of these represent this line. Now, today we're going to call this line a solution set. This line represents a solution set. Now, if, okay, let's, we're not going to get into that quite yet, but for now, this line is a solution set, and this solution set is represented by all three equations. Or I should say it like this. Each of these equations, or what is the solution set of the point-slope equation? It's the line. What is the solution set of the slope-intercept equation? It's the line. What is the solution set of the standard form equation? It's this line. All three of these mean the same thing, and all three of these have the same solution set. Okay, now, if you're finding x-intercept, it does not matter which form you use, because they all mean the same thing. But I'm telling you, if you use standard form, it's generally a little bit easier and quicker. So I generally recommend using standard form to find x and y-intercepts. So let's start with the x-intercept. We write the standard form, okay? So for x-intercept, I'm going to just make a column here. For x-intercept, we're going to use the standard form equation, which is x plus y equals 8. Now, we know something about the x-intercept. The x-intercept has a y value of what? Remember, x comma y. We know that the y value is 0. Okay, So we're going to put 0 in for what? 0 in for y. So we end up with x plus 0 equals 8. And you see how easy this is. What is something plus 0? x plus 0 is just x. We end up with x equals 8. So when we put 0 in for y, we get x equals 8. That goes here. That is our x value. So we get an x-intercept of 8, 0. Now, for your y-intercept, before we do this, let's investigate what, what do y-intercepts have in common. Okay, so here we have a y-intercept labeled as 0, 8. What is the location of this y-intercept? It is what? 0, 6. What is the location of this y-intercept? 0, 4. And this one? 0, 2. What do all y-intercepts or all points on the y-axis have in common? All points on the y-axis have x values of what? x values of 0. So we know something about the y-intercept before we start. We know that y-intercepts have x values of 0. So this is given information. We have to find the other value. So we're going to start with the equation. x plus y equals 8. And to find the y-intercept, we're going to put 0 in. Notice 0 is your x value. We're going to put 0 in for x. We end up with 0 plus y equals 8. And 0 plus y is the same as just what? y equals 8. So again, we get 8. Okay, so the y value is 8. We're going to put that here. Notice y value is 8. Now. Last thing that you need to do is check and see, does the x-intercept and the y-intercept match the graph? Now, if you remember from over here, we already matched up the y-intercept. The x-intercept at 8, 0 is here. I'm going to erase the solution set for a moment. Okay, the x-intercept 8, 0, 4, 5, 6. My line's a little crooked, but or off. But anyway, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The line should cross where? Uh, the line should cross at 8, 0. If you're on, this is why we use graph paper, guys. If you're on graph paper, everything is very precise. You can count this out until you get to 0, 8. You can actually extend your line, just keep going down one right, and down one right, and down one right, and keep going until you get, you'll see that the line crosses at 8, 0. So if you're on graph paper, your line is very precise, but make sure that your x and y intercepts match up. Now before we go on, I want to say this. Your SOL, the main topic on your SOL is what I've just circled, x-intercept. Okay, this step 5 is probably one of the most important steps that you see on the board. Step 5 uh, because of the x-intercept. Now in Algebra 1, in Algebra 1 you guys focused on y-intercept. 
This was the main topic in Algebra 1. Okay, why intercept? Okay, this is not the main topic in Algebra 2. The main topic in Algebra 2 is what? X-intercept. And I always tell students this. It used to be the case that 33% or nearly one-third of your SOL asked questions about this. Okay, so your final test for this class, guys, is going to focus primarily on what topic? X-intercept. Now, now I think the SOL is maybe, I'd say, 15 to 20%. Probably 20% of your SOL. Probably 20% of your SOL is based on this topic. Okay, so x-intercept is huge, and this is going to be the focal point of this class as we go on. So this is an extremely important step. So, okay, so let's go through this again. X-intercept has what? X-intercept has a y value of 0, and y-intercept has an x value of 0. It's opposite. So if you're finding x-intercept, put 0 in for what? 0 in for y. To find a y-intercept, put 0 in for x. Okay, so it's completely opposite. To find x-intercept, put, in, put in 0 for y into the equation. To find y-intercept, put 0 in for x in the equation, and then solve. We'll do this again in the next problem. Now, the next problem says the points given. I'm going to erase here. I'm going to erase all this. Erase all of this. Here, I'm just going to draw a new graph. Let's do the whole thing over. Just redraw a graph. So on your graph paper, you don't have to pause the video, just make a graph and while I'm drawing a graph. I think six by six is enough, probably. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong on that. I think six by six would be enough. Okay, so a line passes through. A line passes through negative 4, negative 3, and 2, negative 1. Okay, so a line passes through these two points. You guys have to, again, find two pieces of information. And what two pieces of information are is that? Okay, that would be what? A point and a slope. What do they give us here? They give us a surplus of points, okay? But what did they not give us? They did not give us a slope. So we have to find the slope. Okay, so pick one of the points. Now here it doesn't matter, okay, let's pick the point with the smallest values, 2, negative 1, okay, 2, negative 1, and I'm going to show you in this problem that it does not matter, okay, so you will definitely see in this problem that it does not matter what point you choose. Now for your slope, m equals delta y over delta x, remember this is your definition, this is your definition that you will write on tests and quizzes, this is what? y2 minus y1, or delta means subtract, y2 minus y1 over what, x2 minus x1, okay? So subtract your y, divide that by subtract your x. So subtract your y and subtract your x. Now we start with uh, the second point, okay? Uh, or second y value, it does not matter which point you call the second point, but let's call this one the second point since it's on the right. So take the y value, the y value, is the second value, so we take negative 1 and subtract negative 3, so subtract y value, negative 1, subtract negative 3, over, now subtract your x values, remember, you started, you started with negative 1 for your y, so you have to start in which point for your x, the same point, so you have to start with what for your x, 2, 2 minus negative 4, okay, so 2 subtract negative 4, don't forget to put your double negative, now let's immediately change this, the so two signs between, Subtract negative. Two signs between that are negative change to what? Addition. Okay? One, negative 1 subtract negative 3. The two signs between become what? Addition. So we have negative 1 plus 3. I'm just going to erase this. Make this plus. Okay? Erase this. Make this addition. All right. Negative 1 plus 3. The signs are opposite. Subtract. 3 minus 1 is 2. Take the sign of the larger is 2. And 2 plus 4 is 6. We can reduce this. 2 over 6. We can reduce, divide each by 2, we get 1 over 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we get a slope of 1 third. Now, <clears throat> m equals, or our slope is 1 third. And now, let's graph our line. What do we use to graph the line? We use our starting position. The point is the starting position. And we use our direction. Okay. Starting with the point, two units to the right. Notice, 
Do we have room to fit two negative one? Yes, we do not have to change our scale. Okay, again, this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. Now, two units right, one unit down. So two units right, one unit down is here, and our slope is one-third. Again, slope is rise over run. Okay. Ah. Rise over run. So our rise is positive one and our run is three. Okay. Rise is how far we go up and down. Run is how far we go left and right. Okay. So since the rise is positive one, we're going to go up one. Since the run is positive three, we're going to go right three. So up one, right three. From this location, go up one unit, right three units. Also go down one unit and left three units. Okay. Remember that going up one, right three, let me turn my phone off. Going up one, right three is the same as going down one, left three. Okay? Why? Let me show you again. Is positive one third the same as negative one over negative three? Okay, is negative one over negative three the same as positive one over positive? Yes, the negatives would cancel. Now, if our rise and our run, if our rise is positive one, that means go up one. And the run is positive three, right three. Up one, right three is the same as is the same as down one, left three. If the rise is negative one, go down one. Rise is negative three, go left. So up one, right three is the same as down one, left three. These are equivalent. Okay. So to go up one, right three is the same as going down one, left three. Now, graph this line. Okay. Ah, turn my ringer off. Okay. Now. Back to the problem. Again, we always verify before we go on, does this line have, or what type of slope does this line have? Positive or negative? Well, this, the line is rising left to right. It's going uphill left to right. So we check. Is our slope positive? Yes, it's consistent. Slope is positive. Line is going uphill left to right, so we're good. Step one was to graph. Okay. Step two. Don't get confused. These are just what we need to find. Step two is point slope form. And point slope form says we start with y, okay, and opposite the y value of our point. Our y value is negative one, so in the equation we're going to put positive one equals, now put your slope, one third times quantity, our x, and now the opposite of your x value. Since your x value is two, put the opposite of that. The opposite of two is negative two. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you that you have to be able to do this backwards. Can you take a point-slope form of an equation and write the point in the slope? Within every equation is contained what two pieces of information? Well, hopefully you say a point and a slope. So if I write here, if you're given this equation, can you write the point and the slope? You will have to do this backwards on the test. So given this equation, can you graph the line? Okay, so if you want to graph the line given this equation, you have to find what point and slope. So what would the point be here? Well, to find the point, we need what? x comma y. To find the x value, we're going to start with the value next to x. Okay, so the x value is what? Or the value next to x is the opposite of negative 2, which is what? 2. Notice. Okay, to go backwards. And to find the y value, we look at the value next to y. We take the opposite of this. Since it's positive 1 in the point, it will be negative 1. And our slope sits here. So our slope is 1 third. All right, so you see, you see that to go backwards, we have to just, it's the same process. Okay, so if we wanted to go from the equation to the point, the opposite of negative 2 is positive. The opposite of positive 1 is negative 1, and we write our slope. Okay, so giving you another one. If I wrote y minus 3 equals 2 times quantity x plus 5, okay, what's our point? Okay, point is the opposite, we need our x value, opposite of what's next to x. Since we have 5 next to x, we take the opposite, negative 5. And the opposite of what's next to y, since we have negative 3 next to y, we have positive 3. So our point is negative 5, 3. And what is our slope? Slope is what? Slope is 2. Okay, now. I'm going to turn my phone off. It just keeps ringing. Okay. All right, now. Okay, so hopefully you understand how to go from point slope backwards. All right, now. Step three. Okay, step three is to write the slope-intercept form. I'm going to have to make... There are a couple other things that I need to say that I, the solution set and showing you that it doesn't matter which point you choose. 
I'm probably just gonna make a third video because this video is running a little long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this video, finish this video, and I will make another quick video to show you that it does not matter which point you choose. Okay, slope intercept form. Okay, slope intercept form. We need to get y by itself. To get y by itself, we have to move the one to the other side. Before we do this, we're going to use distributive property. One third times x, remember? One third multiplied by x. Okay, I want you guys to make a habit of putting parentheses around your fractions in this class. To do x times one third, remember that x is a numerator. We don't write over one, so you guys understand x to be in the numerator. We take x, multiply by one, one times x is what? Do we write one x? No, we just write what? x, okay? And then we have, notice the denominator was one, we don't write this, but we understand one times three is still three. So, we take the x, multiply by the top, x times one is x, and the denominator does not change because three times one is still three. So x over three. All right, now, so one third x, or one third, so we have y plus one. One third times x is x over three. And now, we have to do the one third times the negative two. Okay, so let's ignore the signs. One third, put parentheses around the fraction, times two, okay? We take the two multiplied by the top, two times one is two, leave the denominator alone, it's two thirds. So we end up with plus, or positive, I'm sorry, one third times two is two thirds, positive times negative is negative. Now. We have to move the one to the other side. One will become what? Negative one, cross it out. We have to combine negative two thirds and negative one. So we have negative two thirds, subtract one. Now, again, when you add something must match and what matches doesn't change. Okay, when we add fractions, we need a matching denominator. In this case, I will make it acceptable for you to write one over one, okay? In this case only, if you're adding fractions, you can write one over one, okay, with addition just so it helps you see. What do we multiply the denominator by? We have to multiply the one by three. If we do this to the bottom, we also do this to the top. Okay, so negative two thirds, one times three is what? Three, so we have minus three over one times three is three. Now another way I say this, okay, here, this is a better way of thinking of it, better way of thinking of it, here. Uh, what is equivalent to one? Question, is five over five one? Yes, five divided by five is one. Is four divided by four one? Yes. Is negative 3 divided by negative 3 1? Yes. Okay, give me some other forms of 1. 7 over 7? Okay. 7.2. Is 7.2 over 7.2 equal to 1? Yes. Okay, so notice, back to the problem. This can be fast and easy. So if we're doing here, negative 2 thirds, subtract 1, we have to have a common denominator of 3. Instead of, okay, can we, can we take 1 and convert it to another form? What would be equivalent to 1 that has a denominator of 3? Well, that would be 3 over 3. So we can take the 1 and replace it with what? 3 over 3. Is 3 over 3 the same as 1? Yes, 3 divided by 3 is 1. We can replace this. Now we have a common denominator, and what matches doesn't change. So our denominator is still 3. Remember, when you add, something must match the denominator. And what matches doesn't change. Okay, so the denominator will not change. We add the top. Negative 2, subtract 3. The signs are the same. You add. This is negative 5. So we end up with negative 5 thirds. So our final answer here is y is by itself. y equals x over 3. And negative 5 thirds represents minus 5 thirds. Now, uh, let's rewrite this. Negative 5 thirds doesn't have a lot of meaning. We want to check this with the graph. So let's divide. How many times does 3 go into 5? Okay, so we take 5 divided by 3. How many times does 3 go into 5 goes in once? We get 3, subtract, we get a remainder of 2. So we have three remainder two, or 1 remainder of 2, so 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this as, uh, another way of writing this is y equals x over 3 minus, or let's write it as 1 third. 1 third with parentheses around the fraction, 1 third x, pulling the x back out. Notice 1 third is in front of x. Is 1 third x the same as x over 3? Yes, we did it here. Okay? Now, so 1 third x minus 3 goes into 5 once with the left of the remainder of 2, so we have 2 thirds. Now, looking at y equals mx plus b, question. This is slope. This is y intercept. Okay? What is our slope here? Slope is supposed to be what? 1 third. Does that match our slope? Yes. Now, what is our y-intercept supposed to be? Y-intercept is supposed to be, remember, it's an ordered pair. Y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 1 and 2 thirds. Let's look on our graph. Is this point here. 0, negative 1 and 2 thirds means do not go left and right. Go down 1 and 2 thirds. So go down 1 and part of a whole. Okay, there it is. Okay, so this is the point 0, 
negative one and two thirds. Notice that this point is part way between, a little more than halfway between, negative one and negative two. Okay, so it's consistent. It, it matches up. You should always stop and double check. Now, uh, I'm going to erase this, okay? The negative five thirds is more useful when you convert to standard form, okay? So uh, the y equals x over three minus one and two thirds is better when graphing. The mixed number is better when graphing, but the five over three is better when converting, okay? So mixed numbers are more useful when converting from one form to another. I, I guess you can leave this up here. Okay, step four is standard. I always tell students this is the most useless form, but really not. When you get to linear algebra, that's all you will use, standard form. If you ever take linear, this is the primary form that we focus on in linear algebra. Linear algebra means the study of lines or linear equations. Not really lines, but okay, something related to those. Okay, now, standard form. Well, I guess, yeah, three dimensions, yeah. Okay, so standard form AX plus BY equals C. Okay, AX plus BY equals C. No, linear. No, linear would not just be lines, no. Okay, so AX plus BY. Okay, so X and Y term are where? X and Y term are on the left. So to get to standard form, we need the X term and Y term on the left. So we have to move the X over 3 to the left. X over 3 will become what? Negative X over 3 plus Y equals negative 5 thirds. Okay, now, again, standard form, the X term must be positive. Do we have a problem here? Yes. Also, secondly, we cannot have fractions in our standard form. Do we have a problem there? Yes. You can get rid of both problems at the same time. Notice that you have to get rid of your denominators of three. First, to get rid of your denominators of three, you multiply by the, the denominator, or the larger denominator. I say, well, since they match, we're going to multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three. Now, you can get rid of the negative by multiplying by negative three. You can do it all in one step. Multiply by negative three will get rid of not only not only the three, but it will also get rid of the negative. Okay? So we're gonna multiply by negative three, the threes cancel, okay, and you're left with the negative. Okay, now negative one times negative x gives positive x. Now negative three times y is negative three y, and negative three, well, the three cancels with the three, and the negative is left over. Negative one, this represents negative one. Negative one times negative five is five. And this is your standard form. Again, your x term is positive, and there are no fractions. Lastly, step five. Step five says we need to find x-intercept and what else? y-intercept. Okay. What do we know about an x-intercept? We know that an x-intercept has what? A y-value of zero, and we know that a y-intercept has an x-value of zero. Okay. So. Uh, to find the x-intercept, so let's write x-intercept. What, what equation is easiest? Okay, hopefully you remember that standard form is fastest. Okay, so we're going to start with standard form. x minus 3y equals 5. Now, to find the x-intercept, we're going to put 0 in for here, x comma y. We're going to put 0 in for y, 0 in for y. So replace y with 0, we get x minus 3 times 0 equals 5. Now, 3 times 0 is 0. x minus 0 is just x. Okay, so we get x equals 5. Let's write that here. 5, 0. So what is our x-intercept? X-intercept is 5, 0. Double check your graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, it crosses the x-axis at 5, 0. Now, for your y-intercept, you're going to put 0 in for x. Okay, so we have y-intercept x minus 3y equals 5. We're going to replace, for the y-intercept, we're going to replace x with 0. So we write 0 in for x. 0 minus 3y equals 5. 0 minus 3y, the 0 just disappears, okay? So we get negative 3y equals 5. There is 0 minus 3y is negative 3y. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and we get what? y equals negative 5 over 3, which we already established to be what? Notice it matches. y equals negative 1 and 2 thirds. So we get negative 1 and 2 thirds. When you write the location of this point, I want you to write it as a mixed, num a mixed number, negative 1 and 2 thirds. Let's check the graph again. Well, I think we already did. Okay, so 0, negative 1, and 2 thirds, yes, matches up. Now, I still haven't shown you that it doesn't matter which point to use, but I will go ahead and do that in the next lesson because this video has run a little long. But hopefully you're starting to understand a little better how to graph linear, uh, how to graph linear functions and how to write the three forms of a linear function, namely the point-slope form, the slope-intercept form, and your standard form.
Okay, here, here, and here. Also, in the next video, I will show you why this line is called a solution, a solution set. Okay? All right, great.